Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Um, we're back with Rhea Kelly, the ex-wife of singer R. Kelly. <sighs> okay, we gonna try to... <laughs> we gonna try to get through it. We gonna try to get through it. Um, R. Kelly's book that he released, and then there's those eyes. Right? <laughs> the reason why my eyes are closed, because I can't even see it. I can't okay. see it. Okay, well, you know what? We're going we gonna to debunk all of these foolish yes, fooleries. We are. Yes, we are. R. Kelly's book, Solar Coaster. Um, you called me on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, we, yeah. we had a good chat about some of the things in his book. You were uh, perturbed about some of the quotes that were not in alignment with what really went on. Can you talk to us a little about some of those quotes and uh, what is your truth? Well, my truth is, which, which, which camera do I look directly into? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, my truth here. is, Robert, you don't get to tell my story. That is my truth. You should have never put me in your book. And if you're going to put me in your book, then you're going to tell the truth in the book. You don't get to tell people that we got divorced because I had a problem with being a stay-at-home mom. We got divorced because I was no longer going to sit and be violated. What he did to me was criminal. Domestic violence is a crime. So you don't get to write a book and totally dismiss the turmoil and hell I've been through. And then you're just gonna, we're gonna sugarcoat it and just say, oh, because she didn't wanna be a stay-at-home mom. You know, that's why we started arguing and fighting. Well, I asked her if she didn't love me anymore. She threw a ring into the pond. No, I threw a ring into the pond because there's not enough housekeepers, Maybox, sharks, private planes, jets that's gonna allow me to continue to let you abuse me. That's what you put in your book. You put the truth in your book, not what you want people to know. Drea, for women who are at home going through domestic violence, can you take us through some of the things that you went through that you experienced in your marriage with R. Kelly? The control, the verbal abuse, the emotional abuse, the psychological, I mean, it, the, the funny thing about it, like I say, we've been women who have survived this. You've been in it for so long that the physical is really the aftermath. And there's no real way to pinpoint it and say, on this day, at this time, this is when it happened. It's typically verbal when it starts. It's about the control. Mm -hmm. I think as women, we have been taught that men are in control when it yes. comes to relationships. Yes. The first thing we're taught as little girls is that violence equates being liked or loved. Yes. As little girls, if Tommy pulls your hair, oh, he's only he doing that because he you. likes you. Yes. If he kicks you, he's doing that because he likes you. Yes. So you top that with growing up in a household where I had a Baptist preacher, a man who took his hands to cast out demons yes. and bless people and christen babies are the same hands that are choking the life out of my grandmother. So you topple that with getting in an abusive relationship with a man who, again, my grandfather was a pillar in the community. And here you are with a man who's a pillar in the community. He's a superstar. Mm -hmm. But what people don't also know is I didn't get with Robert when he was super famous. Right. He just left public announcement. Right. He was working his way to becoming the R. Kelly that people know today. And I will say this, and people can take it how you want, but I know my worth. He didn't have a Grammy before he met me, and he hasn't had one since I've been gone. And that does not speak to his music and his genius and his talent. His it character. speaks to the woman behind the man that kept him strong, mm. that prayed for him, that loved on him, that took him in despite your faults. I know what I brought to the table. When you have an inspiration like me, you're gonna get a Grammy. Mm. But when you do me wrong, you're not going to get a Grammy. God is very real about how you treat your wife. Mm. And until he makes it right by me, he thinks he's living in hell now. He hasn't seen anything yet. And that's not a threat. That's a promise from my father. Drea, some will say that Robert is, or R. Kelly, is living in his darkest hour right he, now. He hasn't seen his darkest hour. What was your darkest hour, though? What was yours? My darkest hour was being in Miami, took Joanne, Jay, and Rob to Parrot Jungle Island. And we went and took pictures. And back then, what people call photobombing now, mm -hmm. back then, and I'm gonna tell you how long ago this was, uh -oh. you had to go take film to get developed at Wolf Camera or Walgreens. So it was a That's throwaway it. camera. It was a throw, yes, yes. <laughs> so no had, filters. No filters, okay. no. <laughs> And um, we're looking at the picture. So, you know, when you get them in the envelope, you don't see the picture. So we're sitting there, we're going through the pictures. And Joanne is sitting at the foot of the bed. 
And I guess someone jumped into the picture, guys in the back of the picture like this. So we're looking at the pictures, we're having a good time. And he goes, what the F is this? And I'm like, I, I don't know what you're talking about because I haven't seen the pictures either. And this is, this is Robert saying Yes, this. Robert saying this. You know I don't play that. Who the hell is this in this picture with you? You ought to have eyes in the back of your head. First of all, who has eyes in the back of their head? I can barely use the ones in the front. But okay. What was so different about that moment was Joanne. She's looking at the pictures and she looks up to her dad and she goes, Daddy, why are you being mean to my mom? Why are you talking to her like that? And it was like a light switch went off. And I said to myself, Drea, you have to make a choice right here and right now. If you stay, you are signing her name on a contract she never read. If you stay and she ends up with an abusive man and you tell her to leave, you are a hypocrite. Because her answer to you is going to be, why would I leave him when you stay with my daddy all these years? So that was going through my head. And I just remember thanking God because in that moment, I knew I didn't have the strength to leave him yet. But my baby girl gave me the power. Did Joanne, did JoJo ever see, because she's the oldest. She's the oldest. Did she ever see any of the physical aspect? No. Thank you God. You shielded her. I Thank shielded God. her. But you know what? I'm a mom that likes to be a living example. And it wasn't until I left that I wasn't teaching her to be strong. I was teaching her to be a liar. I was showing her how to hide bruises. I was showing her how to be a lady of grace and turmoil. And that's not what I wanted for her or Jay or Rob. I didn't want them to end up like some kids that come home and their mom is dead and they don't know why. So I knew in that moment, you gotta go, Tria, you gotta go. Tria, take us through the, the moment that you walked away. What was that day like? That day, I just remember playing sick all day. And I went and I got in the bed. And I was like, okay, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And something just said, end it. That was my first answer, end it. And I remember going out on the balcony. We were at the Wyndham Grand Bay Hotel. I'll never forget it, Coconut Grove. And I actually climbed up on the balcony. And I had one foot propped against the wall. And my other mm -hmm. foot I climbed up on the ledge. And I remember looking down. Yeah. And it's almost like God was able to let me see in the future. And I saw my body laying in blood. And I saw the ambulance come. And I saw the housekeeping come out. And they were pointing up. And they said she jumped from up there. And then I remember my baby's voice in the background going, Mama, Mama, why did Mama jump? Why did Mama leave us? And I remember jumping down. And I said, okay, God, you have to give me an answer today. What do you want me to do if this is not for me and you want me to leave? What do you want me to do? God, I need an answer today, not tomorrow, not in an hour. I need it now. And the first thing God told me, he said, grab your laptop. And I'm like, oh, God, you tripping a laptop. Are you serious? And once I grabbed the laptop, he said, put in domestic violence. And I'm thinking to myself, but I'm not that girl. I'm not, I'm not the teeth missing. I'm not the broken bone girl. And God said, keep scrolling. So I kept scrolling, kept scrolling. And at the end of Domestic Violence Awareness website, there was a questionnaire, and there were 17 questions. And they asked you, has your abuser ever done? And of the 17, Robert had done 15 to me. Oh, my God. And that is the moment that I realized, like, Drea, you're being abused. You We want to mention again that we did try and reach out to our Kellenese representatives, and we have not gotten an answer. But for women out there who are going through domestic violence, I hope that you can take this story, and I hope that you can ingest it and learn from it today. And if you are going through it, please reach out to the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. There are people out there that can help you and, and prevent you from 
going through what you've seen here and heard here today. Shreya, I love you. I love you, You too. are a victor. Thank and you. And thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having My me. My God. Thank you. We'll be back.